these tools and materials are used quite commonly in aircraft wiring. Uh, high quality wire strip tool, we've got two varieties of crimping uh, items here. The one on the right is a 20 to 25 dollar cheaper tool which does the job. On the left we have a very high quality approximately $250 crimp tool for crimping these sockets and pins which are used in the D-sub type connector bodies as well as the AMP circular plastic connectors. Again these components are used throughout uh, aircraft avionics and wiring. This is a socket which has been crimped. This was crimped with the tool on the left, a high quality crimp tool. Notice the inspection hole, which allows us to verify that the wire has been inserted deep enough. That hole is right here. You can visually confirm that the wire has been inserted the depth of the connector after the crimp. And notice that there are four indents around the circumference of the pin. Here are the two crimping tools used for the small pins and sockets which we'll be dealing with. Now the tool on the right has been partially disassembled so that I can show you how it works. This is again the 20 to 25 dollar tool and at left we have an aircraft grade uh, approximately two hundred and fifty dollar tool and the root of their function is basically the same that is if you look deep inside as we cycle the crimp tool you see the four indents come in and uh, the same thing happens on this tool which I've taken apart and you see uh, these these are not held in place the way they would be when the tool is actually in use because of the part I've taken away but you can see as you crimp this how each of the four come down and would crimp the pin and again if this were actually assembled you can see this die here would help to hold those four crimping pins in position you wouldn't see them wobble but that's the core function of the tool and with our high quality uh, crimping die here you can see how they come in now there's two important aspects of this particular tool which make it adjustable and that is a select number which in this case uh, when we look at the positioner this positioner is used to locate the, the pin in terms of depth in the tool and what it does is set the position of the crimp uh, axially along the body of the pin and this positioner when used in this tool has a specific setting depending on what you're crimping and that can be read off on the placard on the positioner and we'll see that when we're working with 22 gauge wire we use the select position number six which is read off on the tool. Um, you can see here select number six. And to change this we would simply pull this, raise it and rotate it. For example, there's select number four. So in this in this setup, select number six is for 22 gauge. If we go to seven, that would be for a 20 gauge wire. We're working with 22, so we'll set it at that. and this tool is ready to use. On this tool here, on the less expensive crimp tool, if I reassemble this, um, you can see it has uh, somewhat a degree of adjustability in that we can screw this part of it in and out and achieve some level of adjustment in terms of depth, but primarily with the more inexpensive tool like this will be dealing with manually uh, inserting the pin and holding it that's what the appropriate depth is while we do the crimp whereas with this tool we insert it till it bottoms I'm going to strip a short length of wire and show you the proper way to terminate it
with a pin connector. Now I've pre-stripped this wire to show you two ways not to do it. And that is the first way being too short. You notice when I insert the wire into the pin, I fail to see it in the inspection hole. And at the other end of this wire, I purposely stripped too long where when I insert the wire into the hole I see it in the witness uh, inspection area though I've got too much bare wire extending beyond the pin which itself is not a uh, problem because this pin isn't designed to grip the insulation but at excess this can increase the strain on the wire strands the insulation helps give them mechanical strength so I'll take a short piece of wire and strip it the proper length insert this wire into the pin and you see the strands you can see clearly in the inspection hole and the strip has gone just slightly beyond but not to excess the end of the pin. Now to crimp this I've got the pin loaded on the wire I've got my selection number set at 6 and I've obviously pre-selected my positioner tool to work with this pin and this wire um, so the tool is ready to go uh, I cycle it completely make sure it's open and I insert it Hold a little bit of pressure on the wire and the pin to bottom them out and I begin cycling the tool. Once I start cycling it, the tool will not open until the crimp is complete. So I just finish cycling this and it releases at the very bottom. I can remove the pin, do a quick pull test and I can inspect. As a final inspection I'll look in the witness hole and also just look the, that the geometry of the pin hasn't been deformed by an improper crimp. And now this pin is ready to be loaded into a connector body.